Hello friends. So many of you will have heard of or know something about Essex Short Breaks for Disabled Children. Um, I've been involved with the uh, people that work for Essex Short Breaks for a number of years. I know a number of the providers as well. Um, and so I thought it'd be really useful to interview Mike, Fiona and Sam from Essex Short Breaks to hear a little bit more about what they do, um, how you can get more information about them and what activities are on offer. So have a little look at this interview and hopefully you can learn something. So good morning to Mike and Fiona and Sam morning. Uh, from Action for Children and Essex Short Breaks. Uh, I was just thinking that maybe we could just go around first of all and each of you say your full name and your job title and what you're, where you sit within the organisations. So let's start with Mike. Okay, so I'm Mike Bowyer. Um, I work for Action for Children, um, but my responsibility is to be service manager for the Essex Short Breaks Clubs and Activities team. Great, thank you. And then Fiona? Hi, I'm Fiona Painter and I work with Action for Children on the Essex Short Breaks Clubs and Activities. My role is to be Quality and Development Officer within the Clubs and Activities side of the, the project. So nice to meet you all. Thank you. And Sam? I am Samantha Knoll, a Business Support Officer, which is an Administrative Support for Short Breaks for Action for Children. And I always say this to anybody ever meet, the most efficient administrator I have ever met. <laughs> yes. And sure. knows everything and does everything. We agree. <laughs> it super seamless. So, uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Nice to meet you all. So, um, so the first thing I just want to clear up is that, uh, is that you all are employed by uh, Action for Children and yet you work also on the Essex short breaks I, I I always find that a little bit confusing could Mike perhaps you could explain something to uh, to us about how that works the relationship what are those two organizations and how are they connected sure yeah well action for children as you may or may not know um, is one of the largest children's charities um, in the in the UK um, we, last year, we helped 387,000 children, and we have something like 476 projects, local community projects over England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So 476 projects going, and Essex Short Breaks is one of those projects. Um, Essex Short Breaks Clubs and Activities is actually part of Essex County Council's Community Short Breaks, for, um, for Essex, the whole of the county. Um, Essex Short Breaks Clubs and Activities probably forms about um, two thirds of what Community Short Breaks does. But the other things are the adapted caravans um, on the coast, um, max cards, those kind of things. But we, we are responsible for the clubs and activities and we promote, we develop and work with families um, to ensure that they get um, clubs and activities and respite throughout the whole of Essex. So Action for Children is the charity and then Essex Short Breaks Clubs and Activities is the, um, the project. So we've extended the number of um, activities we do and what we're trying to do is to give a choice um, of activities in nearly all 12 districts of Essex. And we will use providers such as BOSP, um, who are based sort of the Basildon Way Park. What does that, what does that stand for, uh, Mike? Boss? I think it's Brighter Opportunities for Special People or Supported uh -huh. Play, something like special that. Special People yeah, Now, yeah. 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 Special People Now. It used to be support, um, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's changed to Special People. They're based kind of uh, Basildon Way Park. They're based in the Country Park in um, the Braintree area, Great Notley Park. Um, Snap which not only provide services, but they also provide a lot of um, resources as well. Um, you know, library resources and help for parents and families. Um, they're based in Brentwood. And then we have organisations like Diddy Dance, um, based up in the north of Essex, in with your area. Charlotte, with lovely Charlotte, who I know lovely really. Lovely Charlotte, that's the one. Um, Sport for Confidence. Um, and then we've got the Ark Centre, Stepping Stones in Colchester. Also, uh, some of the well, Stepping Stones, uh, we, we, we sometimes, we, in, when we <coughs> were in real life, in the good old days when we could meet face to face, we would hold coffee evenings there at Stepping Stones. Mm -hmm. once, uh, oh, right, yes. Yeah. 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 
And we have, we've also got district councils as well that um, provide services. So Epping Forest is one and Harlow uh, is another. Um, and the so, school clubs. Yeah, the, yeah, school clubs. So, 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 so if I understood then, Mike, what you're saying there is that, yeah. that these are clubs and active, F6 short breaks and activities, clubs and activities, are not uh, activities that you as a project have set up, but they are already existing and you, you support them with... with um, We're supporting and developing them right. um, and trying to bring on new providers as well. So there's always that thought in the back of our mind when we're perhaps visiting one of the providers in a particular area, we'd be thinking about what kind of cl clubs and activities go on in that area and is, is it an area that we can develop? Um, so that's our job. And we've been doing that for the last five years. Um, it's interesting through the pandemic that obviously the way that we have worked has, is totally different now to the way that we started. Obviously, we can, many of the clubs are not running face to face and so many are online now. Even Action for Children themselves through the pandemic, we've prov been providing resources such as parenting coaches where uh, a family can go on one to one live chat and they can get help like well-being um, healthy eating, or even things like managing challenging behaviour. So it's a 24-hour, you know, one-to-one -one support that Action for Children do. So that's one of the benefits in many ways of the project being within the umbrella of the overall um, organisation is that we can pull resources from there um, yeah. to help our families. You know, 387,000 children, that's a lot of families. So yeah, that sounds um, great. That is a lot of families and a massive, yeah. uh, and a, you know, massive well done for all the work that you've done in Essex <laughs> as well. I mean, that's a substantial increase from 18 to 30 within the last few years that you've been going. That's, that's brilliant. Thank, thanks for that, Mike. Um, so, you know, you, you, you touched upon there some of the providers that yeah. uh, form the, the Essex short breaks. And um, I know that that's a big part of your role, isn't it, Fiona? I wonder if you could just say a little bit more about what kinds of activities and clubs are on offer and where are they? And tell us a little bit more. Yeah. About the, about OK, the I don't know whether you can see this, but I'm just going to hold it up because it is available online. And it's a very scrunched up one because it's been in the back of my car for a while. <laughs> But this is our surface map. Have I got it up the right way? Yes. Yep. <laughs> we have got, which help, really helps families. Part of my role is to go out and meet with families. And I've often come along to some of your lovely coffee mornings that you run, Sue, with Maze and met lots of families there, which is really nice. And that is part of my role. I go to special schools and parent support groups meet with families and tell them about all these amazing providers that we have across Essex and this is available on our website which Samantha will probably share with you in a minute um, about how you get to know about all these different ones but this is a very amazing interactive map <laughs> that we have on our website which actually literally tells you in each area what different clubs are available, what age group it's for, what sort of things they do at the club and how you can get in touch with them to find out more about how your child could maybe get, get to try one of those clubs. So we have things like, Mike's already mentioned, we have things like sports clubs. So we have um, Sport for Confidence who do a wide range of multi-skilled sports, which is great. And they can go along and try out some things that they've maybe your child maybe has never tried before. We have more um we have creative clubs so we have things that we work alongside the mercury theater which is over your neck of the woods over in colchester who do some um sort of creative workshops and drama workshops and um, music clubs and then we have things like mushroom theater company which are very specific around the whole um acting and if you want to try out some new skills like that but we also have some generic clubs, which will be looking at more sort of holiday daycare, um, which but we will be a wide range of um, a wide range of skills and interactive clubs that you can just go along, youth clubs that you can go along and hang out and make friends. We give some funding to some of our special schools to run some summer clubs during the holiday periods or half terms. Um, and that will be with children that they may be already know within the school as well. But the, 
you know they've got they're they're used to going to that environment so they're happy to keep going uh, during the holiday times some clubs are maybe where the family all gets involved um because that's what families have told us that they actually like to be able to go and do an activity together but some of them are more like the family needs a little bit of a break so they can go and um, be independent away from the family and that can sometimes be a gradual process families that I may think oh we could never leave them on their own um, or they've tried some you know mainstream clubs and it's not worked out our clubs and our staff are trained to be able to deal with all of that <laughs> um, and don't ever think oh we can't give that a try but obviously it's about finding what best meet the needs, wants and wishes of your child because not everybody wants to go to a sports club, <laughs> not everybody wants to go and do drama but there will be something on there that will hopefully meet the needs of your child and sometimes like with the trail net it's been amazing you know we've had families saying our child will never you know they'll never go on a bike we've tried it we've got a bike at home and they're absolutely petrified about going on the bike and we can't get them to go. And we've they've given it a go at trail net, either at, either at the Thornton Country Park or we sometimes bring trail net to us. So if we're doing a special event, then we bring sometimes bring trail net. And we have been absolutely amazed and families have been absolutely shocked, thrilled and delighted all in one because their child has gone on this bike, they've heard their child laughing and enjoying it for the first time. And we've had lots of good news stories where children that their families thought they are never going to be able to ride a bike, they've done it. <laughs> brilliant. That's I love hearing real that. Wow yeah. factor. You know, it's been the real wow factor. That's that's brilliant. That's lovely to hear that, Fiona. Um so as you're talking, there's two questions that have popped up into my mind. Um, and one is, um, how do you know what parents want? How do you get that information? And the second part is, you talk about providing support. I mean, what kind of support is it that you offer to the providers? So, yeah, so part of what we do, we um, when we are out and about and we meet with um, families, we go specifically to um, organisations like yourself, <clears throat> where, where families are already meeting in their little networks. So there's lots of that across Essex so we go to lots of coffee events and that is why I like so much cake <laughs> <laughs> anyway so when we when we go to meet there it's not just about the coffee and cake although it makes it more pleasurable <laughs> it's about meeting families where they're at it's about finding out what are some of their struggles and strains and pressure points and how can we as an organization support them parents know their children and they know what their likes wants and wishes are but sometimes it's the child's voice is really important to us because sometimes the parent wants the child to go and do a drama club <laughs> but the child when you speak to the child they would actually rather go and do a lego club <laughs> so it's both both of those really so that's that, that was the second that was the second part of my question was about how you know you, you mentioned there about looking at where are there gaps in the county for mm -hmm. activities um and that was the second part of my question was how do you work with those organizations what how do you support them okay does anybody else want to check yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll chip in. Where, where i just wanted to I wanted to add in as well about the work that, I mean, specifically Fiona does working with um, children with disabilities teams as well and with families when they contact us. So we do receive referrals and sometimes that's got a, a really quick outcome and we can pair up families or referrals from social care with a club that meets their needs. Sometimes it just shows a gap and goes into our mapping and gapping process to try and develop services there there's also a certain amount of because there's an application process for um, clubs and activities to to apply for an, another round of funding obviously we produce supporting documentation to say these are the gaps and these are the needs that we've identified and and obviously like your application should address those because they're they're known um, um, unmet needs so we we also survey our providers, um, they, they, there's normally a big feedback 
uh, end of the summer feedback from providers of what their findings are and we survey online for parents that we can't go out and meet or maybe we're not reaching in other ways. We have big um, uh, networking events and kind of share best practice, look up maybe what developments need to be built in and at the moment we're doing that online and that's actually working really well I've been really surprised that there's now an online forum for providers and again they're sharing best practice of how they're working in, in the pandemic which is um yeah it's, it's it's been it's been great yeah I think lots of lots of organizations myself included have had to adapt to this situation and actually found new ways of working that actually work maybe in some ways better than it did when we're just wasting our time driving up and down the A12 every five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. the A12. Um, yeah. so, so I think there's lots of ways that's worked really well. Yeah, so um, yes, you're, you're right. I have been involved in sitting on that annual panel a couple of times where uh, providers have sent in their applications for support for funding. That's been a really, I've loved doing that. It's been such an interesting process for me to see what the organisations out there are are and they're really there is such a diverse range of activities that are on offer as well you know some really really creative um creative clubs and activities going which has been super super interesting but of course now we're in this very strange phase of um, of the covid situation so of course uh, most organizations have uh, are not able to I would say nearly all organizations are not able to offer a face-to-face -face or a, you know an in-person offer see Mike you've described how um, action for children has been adapting um, yeah. but I was just wondering what 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 has that meant for all of you then um, what what has happened with your working hours I don't know Sam if you want to just uh, give us a bit of an explanation about what's happening there we're still working with Essex County Council as well as having that provider forum Essex County Council are in that forum so any ways that come up that uh, action for children, you know, in our project and that the providers, the staff of the, of the subcontracted clubs and activities can support, um, will move in and, and try and do that. Some providers are um, taking referrals from the Essex Welfare Service and then our team have actually been redeployed so a certain amount of our hours will go to supporting the Essex Welfare Service. Oh okay Sam that's something that maybe you could you expand upon that what is the Essex Welfare Service so that people watching this could get an idea including me? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a, a local um, ground roots action action hubs in each district which most people probably are aware of that if you're um, extremely vulnerable if you're shielding or even if you're just in lockdown and struggling you can contact the Essex Welfare Service there um, the the local hubs are also um, responsible for providing uh, packs of essentials picking up people's prescriptions walking dogs and things like that that's in a tiered system with um, um, care navigators at the top you can contact the Essex Welfare Service the numbers out there um, there's also an online referral form so you can refer someone that you know that you think needs help you can self-refer get in touch with them for um, basic needs but there's care navigators that do more than that so there's something called a care navigator plus and there's a child and family branch of that there's a mental health support branch of that and I think quite recently they've tried to raise awareness that there's you can now contact them for uh, support with learning disabilities, autism, dementia care. Um, there's Stay Connected, which is the the branch which helps people keep active at home, and they've got like a YouTube channel, and that's actually one of our providers, Support for Confidence. So that's the Care Navigators Plus, and that literally is like a triage system from when anybody calls the Essex Welfare Service and asks for help. Awesome. How, how can people how can parents or carers watching this find out more information about that and how do they contact there's a, yeah there's a number 0300 303 9988 and i'll send you the link for the site they've got a facebook page as well uh with loads of questions and and the answers come on there for people who maybe are like me a bit of a lurker and would prefer to just lurk and wait until somebody else <laughs> asks a question. you know there's a lot of services that that are Essex County Council Commission services like uh, Essex Cares and I mentioned before Sport for Confidence in ourselves that that feed into that so really the chances are that you can be referred on to, to some appropriate support 
and that's really like an umbrella that more and more services are within that so it's a, it's a useful thing and mike um were you going to mention about the uh, the panels as well which is another way we've been kind of redeployed yeah the panels there's um essex working quadrants so they split kind of essex into four kind of north west mid and south and each of those quadrants have um a child assessment board or panel that meet, um, I think, every single day where they're talking about particular children and, and cases that are going on. Um, and we've been asked um, if we would start to sit on those panels so that um, when particular children and families are being discussed and there's a particular need, then we may be able to put our hand up and say, we're aware of an organisation that does exactly what that family needs that you know what you've described all of you in your in this conversation that we've had today is so many really great structures that link together and work together really well and yet on the ground what parents and carers often experience within the whole census i'm not talking about um essex short breaks now but just like as a whole mm. they find that 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 system is very difficult to navigate they find help very hard to come by and finding out information is enormously difficult um so, you know, it's, it's interesting to be able to hear about these different organisations that there are and, and to learn how those parts work together. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I think that, that it would be super handy if, uh, if, if you're able to share the links with me so that I can, I can share those on with families so that families can either refer into different uh, activities and clubs if they want to, learn more about some of the uh, um, organisations that you've uh, mentioned in the conversation here. Um, and, and just get a little bit more knowledge themselves about how this all works. So um, that'd be that'd be great. And I'm sure Samantha, when she sends you the links, will send you the link which um, they've now got in place through Essex Short Breaks that um, families have to have what they call they call it a passport, but it's basically like a registration number um, that they need to apply for and meet the different criteria, which um, is usually it's on our website, what the uh, criteria is, and it's on Essex as well, about the various things about, um, you know, living within Essex, having a um, confirmed diagnosis and various things like that. Um, because to be able to get to our clubs now, that's what they need. They need this registration number. So it'd be really useful, Samantha sends you the links through that she'll um, include those couple of things as well. Um, but um, and all the information will, is available quite readily so, so that families can know who who can attend that's great thank you well uh, I think that just about sums up all the questions that I had if I is there anything left unanswered or any more information to share that uh, you're thinking of I, I would just I, I would just personally like to say how how much um not just online content, but um, uh, phone calls, helplines being run by our providers, you know, without physical um, clubs and activities running, they've really, really been really in innovative in what they can offer families who they know really well and, uh, you know, drilled down into what they need at this time, which might not be kind of what you expect in a lot of ways. It really has been, um, it's been a really creative time and, uh, and that's really good to know. So, I mean, we have a Facebook page where we try and keep people updated of what kind of work's going on. A lot of that is public and can be accessed. Um, and But it's still a good idea to get that registration, as Fiona's saying, so that the work we're doing at the moment in our forums and, and we're producing supporting documents for the, for the providers and for families as well, it's going to try and be to re-engage people into face-to-face -face activities and try and think, um, you know, think of the future. And, and, and what it's going to mean to re-engage families and, and get back out into the community because that's going to be the next big, big mountain. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. And that sounds like a, a, really, a really good message to, to finish on. Uh, you're going to send me through all the links so that, uh, Sam, so that everybody can click through and find the information yeah. that we've discussed today in this conversation. Um, yeah, so first of all, thank you to all of you for agreeing to speak to me today and spending your time um, with me. Sure. And, and also, thank you very much for the work that you're doing, which is super amazing, as always. Thank you. Nice, nice to speak to you, Sue. 
It's always lovely speaking to Mike and Fiona and Sam. They're all so enthusiastic and so dedicated to their job. And I know that so many families have benefited from the Essex Short Breaks clubs and activities and the caravan as well that was mentioned in the interview. So I've shared all the links here to all the other sources of information that we talked about in the interview, um, including links to their website and to that map that Fiona showed. So hopefully you can get a little bit more idea about what's on offer where you live. Um, and hopefully you feel that you have the opportunity to get in touch with them if you feel that you would like an activity to be provided in your area. Thank you.